Hello and welcome to today's video and this one is about this Osram 250 HQUL made in the Republic of China mercury vapor bulb and it's coated and we have a dimple in the end like the sodium light and you can't quite see inside but I'll try and do it the best I can there's the arc tube and these were originally fitted in the street lights a long long time ago and they were then replaced by the early high pressure sodium lights and also the low pressure sodium lights many of the side streets in Leicester which were lit by mercury vapor bulbs back in the late 70s and early 80s then were changed to um, low pressure sodium which we'll be doing in my next video well anyway as in the last few videos we're going to basically show this bulb on startup and basically run it up to full brightness which you probably won't see in this video due to the camera being fixed so we don't uh, it doesn't dim down as the ball brightens up but it will not also go too bright either advanced warning there is a flickering light in this video this bulb is very flickery and not only can you see it on the camera flickering but you can also see it flickering in real life as well anyway I'm going to turn the studio lights off first and then we're going to fire up the light and it, um, you should see the arc tube inside the light quite clearly Once again, the igniter is making quite a lot of racket and the mercury tube is very green inside the uh, white coated light. Now the, the coating on the light is to colour correct mercury lamps so they look whiter. These are also found inside buildings and St Margaret's bus station in Leicester was also uh, lit by mercury vapour bulbs. And we're starting to get a quite a good glow on the light now. On the video it'll be seen to be dull but this video isn't showing the brightness of this light, it is showing hopefully the arc tube inside. Now the arc tube is a similar length to my previous video of the high pressure sodium light but it is also the size of the arc tube that we've also got in the metal halo light so it's a bigger arc tube and longer than both of the other lamps the arc, well the um, igniter is now quietening down um, the light is still very flickery in real life as well on the camera. I don't know why this bulb is so flickery. If anybody knows why, let us know. It may be just the way they come on. Also, this light requires a ballast to work, this bulb or lamp. 
and I'm using the same ballast equipment that I used in my previous videos to light up the 250 watt high pressure sodium and the 250 watt metal halide lamp. coming up to about three and a half minutes four minutes now and the light is starting to get very bright the igniter is calming down and the bulb is coming up to I suppose you could call steady state the only etching we've got on this bulb is the one that's on it there's no time stamp um, however on the packaging it has got a number of languages and obviously one of them is in English and it basically is warning you um, not to use this lamp without a ballast as it could uh, result in an explosion. Always operate lamp in conjunction with control gear, never directly from the main supply. Otherwise, there is a risk of explosion. The use of the lamp without or with a damaged bulb is dangerous and is not permissible. I.e. if the outer shell is broken, you should not use this light. As there's a high risk of electric shock. Well, anyway, as we can see on the video now, the, um, the tube is lit. It appears to be white and the clear bit at the end is giving out a bit of a green hue from the arc tube inside which you can see on the camera but now is too bright for me to see in real life and in my next video I'm going to be doing the low pressure sodium lamps which are considerably bigger than the three I've got shown so far. I have two low pressure sodium lamps. I have a 35 watt one and a 55 watt one. So they are considerably lower wattage than the three lights that I've currently used. However, the yellow sodium lamps are considerably brighter. But, of course, they only give out that monochromatic light. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and me ranting on about random stuff. Um, please put any likes or dislikes. And if you know any information about this lamp, like in the, how they work, and, of course, what glass they use, because obviously the glass is important because mercury lights give out UV so the glass has to stop the UV from exiting the bulb and on that note I'd like to say thank you for watching and we'll turn off the light and we'll let the arc tube cool down which probably won't be very long as we're looking through a cloudy bulb but nevertheless Let's turn off the light. Thank you and goodbye.